element. Now, element pickup, is that what gives me um, health? I don't remember. Shards and ground. Okay, so they are the ones. Okay, so that just makes it so I receive more health. Gotcha. Um, examination of paranatural topics, technological limitations of the oldest house. Summary. The oldest house imposes certain limitations on our bureau, but by far the most restrictive is the inability to use certain technological instruments. The oldest house does not allow devices that receive or emit any blank signal. Radio waves are the only transmittable signals in the oldest house, and even those are often unreliable. If the power of collective unconscious is taken into account, it could be that certain pieces of technology are too new in the cultural blank of, for the oldest house to blank them. Similarly, these items have not been known to become receptacles for altered status. Technology may be moving at too fast a pace for the blank to occur. Modern technology tends to disappear and break here, sometimes quite violently. Blank agents have been injured by cell phones exploding in their pockets while entering the oldest house. Wow, remember Samsung? No. Was it Samsung? I forget what it was. The phones that like would explode in people's pockets. Oh, right here. There it is again. A welcome message. No, I'm running. <laughs> um, week 83 report. Summary. Visited the following Nevada accommodations. Desert Sun Inn, Big Sky Motel, Starlight Motel, in and out Aztec Court, Sleepy Bear Motel, Silver Spurs Ranch, Elgato Blanco Inn, A-plus Lodge. Uh, wow. I do wonder if a motel called the Ocean View is going to be found in a landlocked state, but hey, I guess I'm not paid to think, right? And for the record, I again request that you give us a budget to get two rooms each night. Agent Rowley and myself are very tired of sleeping in the same room. See you on the road. The boys in research said performing rituals may help identify any places of power. Drinking those little whiskeys is my ritual. I'm so scared. Thanks, bitch. Yes, oh. It's overpowering here. You don't want me anywhere near it. I'm with you on that. Excuse me. Hiss Barrier. Field research on Hiss Entity, Hiss Barrier Confidential. Summary. The Hiss Residence Field is a physical impet impediment that is difficult to define. Hiss Barriers appear as ways to impede escape or access by Bureau personnel. Two methods have been discovered for lowering them. One, destroy the multiple concentrated resonance sources found in the vicinity. Two, destroy the Hiss Entities in the area. The resonance fields seem to require support for their size and density from other non-connected sources of Hiss, Hiss Resonance. Without the ability to draw from these sources, the barrier will fall. Does an inactive structure made of his resonance qualify as a conscious being? Does the distinction make any difference when considering the hiss? What does the very act of building walls to prevent our movement tell us about the hiss? To what degree is it watching and planning? Refer to file blank. Okay. Oh, wait. 
Um, I did get a new thing. What's this one? Energy plus six. I don't know what that is. Oops. Okay, that's where I'm supposed to go. So obviously I'm not going to go there right now. Um, please be aware, due to recent fluctuations in the nearest control point, this area's stability has been downgraded to yellow. Reference chart. Green, stable. Yellow, low possibility of unanticipated building shifts. Orange, high likelihood of unanticipated building shifts. Red, frequent unanticipated building shifts. Havana, unana. Um, event summary. An auditory event occurred at the United States Embassy in Havana, injuring the majority of diplomatic staff stationed there. Blank deaths were reported and the outgoing information has been managed. Event response. Bureau agents arrived at the embassy on the same day as the event was reported through federal channels, but were too late to witness the AWE, which was reported to have been blank. Staff experienced sudden intense vibrations and noise accompanied by an intense pressure in the ears. This lasted for blank minutes. No visual phenomena was witnessed. The scene was cordoned off and the embassy staff were transported to the continental U.S. After Formula I-9 was recited in the vicinity, a single cowboy boot began to vibrate, identifying it as an altered item. The item was up, contained and brought to the Bureau of Examination. Huh. Um, I had a dream, and I built the thing I saw in my dream. A machine that will contain God, but not the God you know or the ones anyone knows. A new God. This machine will be his body, his heart, and his mind. I made it just like the dream showed me. I used the motor from the refrigerator and the coils for my toaster and the fans plus the timing belt for my car's engine and the wheels for my son's skateboard. God can't move yet, but the dream said he would learn how on his own. This is just a beginner's body, like a baby's butt of machine instead. God only needs a place to start. Um, if you want to interview me, please contact me at the address on the envelope. My phone does not work anymore. I had to use a dialing plate on God. Uh-huh. <laughs> God was a skater, boy. He said, see you later, boy. <laughs> Sounds like zombies. Oh, hey. MK Ultra and Men in Black went really wrong. Excuse me. No time for walls in this bitch. Dead letter approval. Um, greetings, Director Trench. I'd like to thank you for approving my request for the Dead Letters Archive. Cataloging the Bureau's collection of a delinquent mail will provide an extremely handy database that research teams can use to search for any connections or related topics found among the letters. Aside from the more functional purposes, the archive will allow us to preserve these windows into authentic human encounters with the paranatural world. The letters came to us from various places and times, gathered by the Postal Service as undeliverable. The Bureau is a perfect home for them. I realize not all letters contain accounts of genuine paranatural events, but even the erroneous ones allow us insight into how the unknown is perceived by real people. Of course, I will first compile a system to allow us to analyze the letters for any information or suspected connections to AWEs and other altered materials. So thank you again. Can't wait to delve into my dead letters. Okay. It's a weird way to put it, dude. Excuse me. Bitch. Low health boost. Damage while low on health. Ooh. Bitch, I ain't scared. Fuck you. Just look at him. Eight inches 
worldwide and capable of storing a whopping 80 kilobytes. <laughs> Stolen by our friends at the CIA, the disk held the launch codes to Soviet nukes. Uh, this is not the disk, of course, but one exactly like it, a perfect fusion of concepts vibrating in the Cold War era collective unconscious. A receptacle. It is a receptacle for dangerous energies to hone in on, and they did. We don't have the details, but when things started flying around the disk, it was transferred to us. It's an object of power. Oh, okay. Oops. Oh, and it can launch things telekinetically through the air. Uh, to date, we've, we've launched maybe three dozen pencils. And once, we even launched a cup. <laughs> okay. Cleanse control points gain access to fast travel sites throughout the older files. Um, to whom it may concern, I am being contacted by the past presidents of the United States of America. They appear as spirit guides, giving me their wisdom. John Adams kept saying I need to fix America, but I can't really understand him. They all have a lot of opinions. <laughs> People tell me I'm imagining it, but Theodore Roosevelt showed me how to fix my lawnmower, and I don't know a thing about lawnmowers. Explain that. I have great dead men telling me about the past and the present. If you'd like to use my abilities to help run the government, please let me know. I know the White House could use me. Yours in earnest, James Bartholomew. Um, hello, avid readers. The Bureau Book Bunch will convene at the usual spot on the corner table of the cafeteria at 5 p.m. on Tuesday. Currently discussing Unless You by J.D. Brooks. Everyone should get their reviews to me by Monday before lunch so I can generate some conversation stories before the meeting. Happy reading. So that's what crack is like. <laughs> oh, another video. <laughs> oh no, this is what crack is like here. Don't hug me, I'm scared, Ten. Oh my god. Was that supposed to be me? <laughs> oh, um, cause like you saw the red hair, right? Like, was that supposed to be me? Um, Mr. Governor, I called the police, but they never come to my house. I got a problem and you got to send folks to fix it. Uh, I got my wife, one of them singing fish on the walls. It's not a real fish. It sings when you hit a button, but it's got the devil in it. It flies around at night and sings devil songs, it says lots of cuss words. The devil got in my house because of the fish, and you gotta come handle it. My wife is real upset. When can you come? Sincerely, Dwayne Barr. Whoa. Oh! Man, you just got destroyed by a fire hydrant. Oh. Hey! Let me in! Well, that's not happening. 
<laughs> the Penn and Teller tubes. Um, Book Club Notes for Penny by L. Sampson. So I don't usually read a lot of sci-fi, but as far as space operas go, this was all right. The title, unless you could refer to a bunch of things in the book, I guess, but I thought it was a little vague and stupid. The way the characters kept throwing it around almost like a catchphrase got real annoying real fast. The best part of the story was the space battles. I sided with the fixers, obviously, because they had the coolest tech and their motives made the most sense to me. Honestly, if I had to choose between some hoity-toity flowers and guns space hippies or a badass bunch of warriors who go around devouring planets like cheap sushi on a Sunday, I know who I'm picking. That scene where they invade city planet and convert the entire population using those brain worms, and that space dog fight between those two ace pilots, sign me the fuck up. What kind of ruined the whole thing for me was when my favorite character got killed not even halfway through the story, but getting a battery cylinder launched into his face by a gravitational anomaly. His death didn't feel necess necessary at all. Oh my god, speaking of. <laughs> the guy that just got, who just died because he got shit flung in his face. Whatever those are. Dead. An object of power. Looks like the pulse of last year. Oh. Oh. Oh, who are you fight in? Actually, can you fight someone out? to hear you when I'm here. It's like the channel's been changed. The board's in charge here. Their pyramids in bureau seal. Are they really the ones pulling the strings? I'm not their director. I'm no one's director. Oh, you got it. Yo, who wants shit flung at their fucking head? Let's go. <laughs> there you are. You were gone. Cut off. I got it. Yes. Come on, bitch. <laughs> said that the hotline can be reached through the mail room.
Um, Federal Bureau of Control, Reinformation Campaign Summary of Willow AWE. National news sites have begun publishing the story of the polar bear attack on the Alaskan town. You all know I don't like to boast, but claiming that this family was killed by migrating polar bears desperate for food because their ecosystem is being ruined by global warming was a stroke of genius. Using current ecological concerns makes the public le much less likely to blank. So another AWE behind us and the public is none the wiser. Well done, everyone. It was a strong campaign and perfectly executed. This doesn't mean we can stop monitoring blank, blank, and blank for any off-message opinions, but it's looking like we're in the clear. Tomasi out. Well, that sounds great. You're listening to America Overnight, mystifying the airwaves for more than 29 years. Thank you for staying up with us. Ghosts. We've had many callers over the years tell us of hauntings, voices, and other phantasmagorical phenomena. Today, friend of the show, Dr. Quincy Reagan, tells his story. Quincy, thanks. This is something I experienced recently while staying at the Chili Pines Motel in Macon for last year's Suspicion Con. <laughs> I was in room 47. The night manager, an avid listener of the program, insisted I take this particular room. Now, the manager explained that years back, the body of a man was discovered under the bed, inside that wooden border that motel beds tend to have. And the body had been there a week, he said. Guests had stayed there, sleeping with the corpse a foot below him. They only found the body when housekeepers complained about the smell. Hauntings have been reported in room 47 ever since. I happily took the room. I fell asleep pretty quick, checking under the bed first, of course. No ghosts visited me, no chilly spots or flickering lights. But when I woke up, I found myself under the bed. It was dark, stiflingly hot. Luckily, I was able to push the mattress off and crawl out before I suffocated. The night manager was kind enough to find me another room. Oh, there you have it, listeners. What we call ghosts take many forms. Quincy was brave enough to tell his story, and I encourage you to keep calling and writing whenever you encounter something strange, something you can't explain. Maybe you're seeing colors that we have no name for. Maybe your toaster is possessed. Remember, dear listeners, when no one else believes you, we do. America Overnight, we'll be right back. Uh-huh. What's this? Yo, can you not? I was getting something, bitch. Oh, hey. Um, pay attention, Alberto. This is the last time I'm explaining this. Internal lockdowns are manually triggered events that lock one or all of the sectors by restricting use of the sector elevator, effectively locking staff in their sector until the emergency is handled. They can only be lifted via the directorial override and maintenance once the director is satisfied that the situation is under control. External lockdowns are a bigger deal. Nothing in or out of the whole building. It's only triggered by a code red containment breach based on some complicated system that security and research slapped together. It can only be lifted once A, the threat has been neutralized, and B, a high clearance, level, high clearance individual gives the system the all clear. This process is not the same as a directorial override, so stop saying so in documentation. I know it's confusing as hell. I've told Darling a hundred times to change it, but they're adamant it stays the way it is. Honestly, I don't think they even know how to change it at this point. Let's just make sure our staff understand how this works, okay?
Oh shit, what's that? Strange collection. Oh, dope, okay. Um, last month, our on-site server experienced an intrusion by unauthorized users. After a thorough investigation, it was confirmed that the users only accessed a video file which contained portions of various Dr. Darling presentations. Investigators were able to track the users through their IP addresses. The following are the confirmed identities of these users. Patrick Struchkins, Rubens Nogura, Ardo Kalum Kalumaki, Christopher Mills Bowling, Jocko Sorinen. These individuals are in breach of Bureau Code 91 and have been placed under surveillance by our external investigation team. Further action is pending. Oh, I never looked at these. Um, His Corrupted Ranger. The Rangers are the Bureau's well-trained and well-armed expeditionary forces. Their His Corrupted counterparts are equally formidable. Prior to corruption, Rangers were trained to use a variety of weapons in order to face any threat found during AWE response or threshold expiration, including submachine guns, assault rifles, and automatic shotguns. Um, His Rangers utilize these weapons as well as the advanced tactics taught by Bureau instructors. Some are additionally outfitted with Bureau-made body armor. His Rangers have no observed paranatural abilities beyond some being protected by a shielding of dense His resonance capable of stopping bullets. Considering the advanced training the His Rangers are capable of applying to the situation, is it feasible to consider the human mind still remains intact to some degree? Um, or is the His able to tap into this combat training and utilize it? Further observation is required. Refer to file. Uh, his corrupted demolition expert. Um, the bureau only allows certain highly trained individuals to handle volatile materials and weaponry. Our demolition experts are instructed in the use of explosives in dimensions with distinct physical laws, making them important assets for engineering work as well as combat situations. His demolition experts are the only observed his variations to build this specially built rocket propelled grenade that is designed to identify and track blank entities once fired making them a threat whose termination should be prioritized in combat scenarios. I find it remarkable that the HIS reached strict usage of this weapon to the Bureau personnel who trained specifically for its use. What does this tell us about its behavior? Can it not pass along new information to corrupted entities? Still too many unknowns. Oh, I have a lot. Oh, the floppy disk? Uh, must be contained in a cell with no other loose material. The object is an 8-inch diskette containing Soviet-era nuclear launch codes. When bound, the object allows para-utilitarians para to tele telekinetically lift material and throw it at a short distance. The object is currently bound to Blank for research purposes. Stolen from a Soviet military base located in Blank by agents Blank and Blank with the CIA, the diskette contained launch codes to Blank missiles believed to be reserved for use against Blank. After being returned to America, the diskette began throwing computational hardware at members of the decoding team. An informant in the CIA tipped the bureau off, and it was requisitioned by agents the next day. Yeah, and then this should just be the America Overnight. Oh, and the Threshold Kids, yeah. Whatever that was. This must open the door. Whoa, dude. You good? Threshold kids is nightmare fuel. Yeah, definitely. They can fly now. Great. Ow. <laughs> of 
course he had to go into the butthole looking thing. Um, his elevated agent, confidential. His elevated agents display abilities similar to telekinetic competencies observed in Bureau Para-Utilitarian. Para-Utilitarian. Some prefer to charge their targets while others launch objects at them. Telekinetic attacks have been ineffective against the Hiss Elevated due to their own talent in the area. They do not use any weaponry except their own paranatural capabilities. Some Hiss Elevated have been seen levitating while strapped into chairs. This is likely the result of individuals being corrupted while undergoing cognitive recording in parapsychology. How are they able to use paranatural abilities? Is it, it is possible that these individuals were bound to objects of power prior to corruption. It's also worth considering that the Hiss residents can identify and express latent paranatural ability in the individuals it corrupts. Feeling he'll be back. Is there an upstairs? Focused. The hotline should be past the mail room. Um, hey Malcolm. Yes, tea time is at 7. I'll see you at the course on Sunday morning. By the way, have you heard about this Tennyson report? Apparently there's a bunch of copies drifting around the office. Trench is looking to get his hands on any information about who wrote it. You wouldn't happen to have heard anything about that, would you? See you Sunday, Jim. Um, a spate of disappearances was traced to a home in the city of Butte, which Bar Bureau agents discovered a translocative light switch cord. Bureau agents arrived at the home of a local celebrity located at Blank Blank, which had been connected to a total of blank disappearances in the area. Agents found no one inside. While searching a closet, an agent pulled the light switch cord and disappeared from view. Another agent was selected to pull the cord in order to replicate the event. He disappeared as well. Both agents were discovered at the oldest house blank days later, found in a sealed room by rangers exploring a new area of the house. The light switch cord in the Butte's home closet disappeared during this incident. Butte, Montana, what's up? Alberto Tomasi. Well done, everyone. It was a strong campaign and perfectly executed. Head of comms. The hiss got him. All right, take this down. The situation in Cuba has been evaluated by the relevant authorities. The mysterious illness affecting the staff at the U.S. Embassy in Havana was caused by sonic weaponry in the hands of a foreign power. Numerous personnel have damage to the inner ear, but most are expected to make a full recovery. Of course, the event also damaged their cellular walls, but we can't blame that on some stupid noise guns. Thank God no local doctors examined them first. Honestly, what are the odds of all of that in the show up inside the U.S. Embassy? Talk about good luck, huh? <laughs> so much easier to... Hey, are you still recording this? <coughs> the hotline can't be far now. What's this? I like finding out things. I'm sorry. Um, Butte. Again, okay. According to their testimony, the agents have been transported from the Butte home to a roadside motel named the Ocean View Motel and Casino and discovered a room keeper performing a ritual. See file blank. Or sorry. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. The key opened a door marked with an inverted black pyramid, which they only learned after a lengthy period of trial and error. After pulling another motel cord found inside this room, they were transported to the oldest house. The disappearances of the home's owner and the other locals of Butte have been attributed to the slight co switch cord. The Ocean View Motel is known, now known to have many doors and pathways. Since the occurrence, identical light switch cords to the one found in the Butte home have begun appearing throughout the oldest house. At the time of writing, blank light cords have been found in the oldest house, located in the blank and the blank sectors. Uh, these all access the Ocean View Motel, though how exactly this link's link operates is blank but initial hypothesis uh, center on the Butte AWE as a blank blank. Oh, there's a call. Director Trench, Bill Everett. Keeps talking to the custodian.
<laughs> Yay! a lot of roadside motels across the country on the road on the run under the radar this feels like all of them like something recognized from a dream has a black pyramid on it. Thank you.